Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and I want to thank you for coming to this tutorial where I'm going to teach you how to insert new router bits into your Vectric software tool library. If you have Vectric VCarve Desktop, Vectric VCarve Pro or the Aspire version, this video pertains to you because despite the differences in the software, the tool library is set up exactly the same. So I'm gonna walk you through that whole process. This came by virtue of someone who watches my channel, his name is Doug, and he emailed me, said, I have to add a surfacing bit to my software and I don't know how. And so we got on the phone and I walked him through it and I realized, okay, I had to learn it, he had to learn it, you're gonna to have to learn it. So that's what we're gonna do here. So we are just gonna dive into VCarve and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Really quick though, I wanna tell you something pretty exciting when it comes to router bits. If you have like shopped around for the right router bits for your machine, you know that it's a bit of a challenge trying to find what you want on Amazon, um, going to the brand name bits, very expensive. Well, I had the same problem, especially trying to find a nice set of router bits to start with. So I decided I was gonna solve that problem and try to find a manufacturer in the United States who could make a really good set of router bits and I found them and now I am actually sourcing them through my website idcwoodcraft.com solid carbide router bits these things are cutting amazing I want to show you real quick on a project that I did exactly what these things do so I did this sign right here and let's take a quick close-up and then we'll dive into vCarve and set up a tool in your tooling library so we're looking at the sign, and I would just want to point out, this is uh, done with a 90 degree V-bit. This one right here. You know, when I told the manufacturer, I want rock solids of carbide, that's exactly what they delivered. You want your tools to be made out of carbide. You can see here, they got really good. But look at this, you see this area on the tree? Very smooth, you can just barely make out what's called witness marks or cut lines. That's very typical in any type of machining environment. My experience in manufacturing, being a CNC machinist on metal, these witness marks or tool marks is just something that comes along with the, the turf of any kind of cutting like this. But this is extremely smooth. And here's the thing that really blew me away. This was done with a flat bottom bit, a router bit, with this one. This little tool would pass back and forth over this area throughout this entire tree. And the whole tree is exceptionally smooth. And this is the entire bit set right here that is going to be available. <laughs> First time that we actually have an entire set that you can use. If you've tried to search them out on Amazon, you know it's nuts. So what's going to be available is this 90 degree V-bit, a 60 degree V-bit, 30 degree V-bit, one eighth inch ball end mill, a quarter inch ball end mill, a sixteenth inch up cut flat bottom end mill, a one eighth inch down cut flat bottom end mill, and a quarter inch down cut flat bottom end mill. If you want to get a hold of those bits, you'll need to get on the priority list. The link is down below. These bits, I can't even keep them in stock. They're moving so fast. Anyway, let's dive into Vectric to teach you how to get your tools into the database. So the tool that we are going to be putting in will be a one inch surfacing bit. So we are in Vectric VCarve desktop right now and I remind you this is going to work exactly the same for the Pro version or Vectric Aspire. So currently we are in the design area and your screen is going to be looking somewhat like this. Depending on the variant you have, it may look different. First thing you want to do is go over to Toolpaths area by clicking this little button here. It's an arrow that points to the right, and it's telling you to go to the right. And now we are in the Toolpaths area. Again, yours may look a little bit different depending on the variant, but this will not. Right there, that's your database for your router bits. So click that button and you're going to open up your router bit library. 
and it's going to look like this. So I'm going to walk you through everything in here so you understand this, and I promise you by the time you're done with this video, you're going to know more than virtually every Vectric VCarb user out there. <clears throat> so congratulations. What you're looking at here is your tool library list. Now these are all the router bits that are going to be in your software. If you've just got any one of these variants of the software, yours will not look like mine. I have a lot of tools in here. You'll just have a few already populated in there that Vectric gives you. I think you'll have for end mills the 16th inch diameter, the 8th inch diameter, and a quarter inch diameter. Then you may have a few ball nose in there. You may have some V bits, but not very many. You are going to be populating this pretty quickly because you are going to need to get some other bits and import that information in here. I want to show you what everything is on here though. So this is your entire tool list. And the way it's broken down in this tree is first level we'll say imperial tools or metric tools depending on what you want so there's two aspects so we got the imperial tools we move down and down here there's metric tools and then they have laser tools as well whatever you're working in you want to set up your tools in that area what I'm going to show you will work the same for metrics and inches. It's just if you want if you're dealing with metric end mills, you want to come down here and open up the metric tools tree and insert your tools down there. I close it out because I don't use metric tools. Before we dive into this, I just want to show you some of the other stuff that's in here. See right now I'm clicked on Imperial Tools. Imperial stands for inch system. So all the tools underneath it are in inches. If you look over in this field here, you have a name and you have a note. So the name that's written right here is the exact same name that's written right here. Whatever you put in here is going to display right here. So right now it says Imperial Tools and in parentheses has IN standing for inches. So I'm going to change that to inches, close the parentheses, and I'm going to close this whole box, but I want you to see what it says right there. It says Imperial Tools, I, N, and I say, OK. And then I go back into it, and now it says Imperial Tools, Inches. The same thing would be if you selected end mills. Now, I want you to note what's going on here is this is just the titles of the, each tree that we are changing. Because if you go down into Tools, it's going to look a lot different. So I've selected the uh, quarter inch tool and there's a whole bunch of information down here. We are going to walk through all this, what it means, and the information I'm giving to you is very important. So you want to stay with me through all of this. So that's uh, that area. And then up top here it says material. So we are not going to mess with this right now, but just so you know, when it defaults in from your new software, there's going to be three items on there. There's going to be hardwood, MDF, and softwood. Sorry, I clicked one. This area is where you can add other materials, such as aluminum, brass, PVC. And when you do that, your tools will be set up according to that in the database. So one tool can be set up in multiple different types of feed rates and speeds relative to that material. As a beginner, just leave it at hardwood because that's probably what you're going to be working on is wood. There's a little button next to that where it allows you to add in more fields like aluminum and what have you. If you click that, you can add that in here. We're not going to cover that because you can mess things up. So this one I don't want to show you right now, and it's just so you know what it's all about. Up top here, you can upload to the cloud or download to the cloud tool information and then over here says machine and as desktop or large is what comes in and you can click the little box next to it and add more kinds of machines in there again this is advanced we're not going to do that either so we're going to come back up to imperial tools and we can change the name you know that and now we can enter in notes 
notes will not appear anywhere this is simply for reference only so under notes I can say this is for inches only we're going to do this notes thing again in just a little bit so I'm not going to spend any time on that now down below in the bottom there are six buttons the first button is add a tool under the selected tool group so if I am under N mills let's do this under Imperial if I'm under Imperial tools and I click that button I want you to watch what it's going to do up here I'm going to hit the plus button and now it's, it's just entered a tool with uh, some random name right underneath Imperial tools I obviously don't want that to be there but that's what that button does if I was in end mills and I clicked the button it's going to insert a random tool a ball nose end mill and then we would go in to set up all our tools so what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of this really quick because I don't want these to be in here and come back into it all right so then you know what the plus button is the next button is add a group this button right here so adding a group is like end mills is a group ball nose is a group v bits is a group that is going to create another group the next one is copy we're going to be dealing with that so i'll show you that in a little bit and then these two are so you can import or export tool lists that will import all the settings for you again that's a little advanced you won't do that for a very long time if you were brand new to this and of course the last one is delete if you have something selected and you hit the delete button it's going to delete that tool out of there don't do that if you do that by accident just cancel out of the entire library and go back in because once you hit ok oops hit the wrong button once you hit ok it's going to take that uh, all the information you put in and update your database accordingly so now you understand what this field is all about and everything that's in here. Now we're going to get into adding a one inch surfacing bit. So a surfacing bit is effectively an end mill. And I want you to understand what an end mill is. I'm just going to click on a tool. When I say the word tool, I am also meaning router bit. Basically, they're one and the same. I just had that bad habit from my machining days. We always called them tools instead of router bits so you understand my lingo if you look at an end mill you see an image has popped up here what an end mill is is a flat bottom cutting tool an end mill is designed to cut sideways not down you have the flat bottom so it leaves a flat smooth surface if we go over to the ball nose and select a tool then you can see now the image has a rounded end on it and that's for round cuts and V tools or V bits again that's very different as well so you'll want to get to know this stuff quite a bit we're going to deal with this stuff in just a minute um, I just want you to understand the differences between tools and the reason a surfacing bit is considered end mill is because it's a flat bottom tool meant to cut sideways so when you have Vectric for the first time there are going to be a few tools in your database but not everything that you need and you are going to be buying tools fairly quickly like the tools that I am selling the entire set that you need the only starter set I've been able to find and put together because nobody else has it and at a good price good quality solid carbide um, oops I'm advertising sorry <laughs> but what you want to do is select the the existing tool that is closest to the size that you want so if I remember correctly Vectric had the 16th inch diameter end mill an eighth inch diameter end mill and a quarter inch diameter end mill so the closest one to one inch is the quarter inch so we're going to select that one and we're going to come down to the copy button right down here and hit copy and you can see now that it has created a duplicate name so this one here is the one I had selected. It says end mill and quarter inch in parentheses. The one below it says end mill and a quarter inch in parentheses. The difference is a little icon next to it. 
You can see every icon has a gold solid color to it, except for the one that was just added to it, right there. That means that that tool does not populate it with the data that it needs. So we're going to select that, and what comes up is a little bit of information. The image, of course, of an end mill, and the geometry information. You have your text dialog box, the tool name, and then down here you have a few other items. Now, there's a couple of drop downs here. You want to not mess with the drop downs, just leave them as they are. And then you have a copy button. So, what we're just going to do is copy that tool. I just click copy, and now all that data is imported into the tool for that. But you're going to see it did not turn a solid color yet. That's because we did not apply this information into the database. And we're not going to do that yet. What we're going to do is add some information up here to the name. So next to the name is a little button. When you click that button, you're going to get something called uh, the tool name format. Now this format is set up so the data spits out the name end mill and then puts the size of the tool in parentheses. We're not going to mess with the information that's already in here right now. We're just going to add to it the word surfacing. So we know that it's a surfacing bit. And then we're going to select OK. Now before I do that, I just want you to watch this name up here. Here we go. Now you see it added surfacing to it. And it did the same thing over here. So we've altered the name, but we did not get rid of these parameters. The reason you don't want to get rid of these parameters is because the software will update it appropriately for you after you enter information. So the next field is the notes field. And this is for your reference only, as I said before. So one reference would be where are you going to source that tool when the tool wears out. So a great example is you buy it from www dot idcwoodcraft.com I'm advertising again, sorry. But at least that uh, gives you that information or you can add in other information that you want to. This is for your reference as I said. <coughs> Below that is the tool type. So right now it's selected at end mill because we copied an end mill. When you drop that drop down box down, you're going to have a whole list of different types of tools that you can set up here. And this is important because VCarve or Vectric is going to take that into account to ask you different types of information. For example, we are in end mill right now and you look right here and it, all it asks for is a diameter in this field right here. And if you look at the image, there's a little measurement down there at the bottom of the router bit that has a D in it. So that's what that little D over here stands for. If we change that to a V-bit, say, now we have two pieces of data we have to enter in. And not only is there a D, but there's an A as well. And if you look at the image, there's your A for your angle and D for the diameter, which is the maximum diameter of the cutting tool. And that's going to change depending on what you do. A drill has a drill point angle and the diameter of the drill. So we are going to go back to end mill. And all we have to do is change the diameter. Now we know we're doing a one inch surfacing bit. So we're going to change this number right here to 1.0. Now before we go on, the little box above it is a drop down where you can select whether the tool is in inches or it's in millimeters. So you just click that and select whichever one you want. And it'll do all its calculations in inches. And then you go to the number of flutes. Now our tool, our cutter bit, has three flutes on it. Flutes are the number of cutting edges on the router bit. Typically there's going to be two. Sometimes there's one. Sometimes there's three. Once we have that information, we're going to hit Create Settings. And it's going to plug all that information, do calculations, what have you, based on that tool and uh, the other information you put in there. Um, such as down here, it stole the information from the quarter inch 
end mill up here that we copied in. So one of the things you see right here is it's altered the name of the tool to diamond drag bit. And I'm not really sure why it did that, but we are going to change that back to the quarter inch end mill. So I'm going to take diamond drag out of it. Oh, I know why that's in there. It grabbed that information too. I'm just going to take out diamond drag that I had entered in there, click OK, and you're going to see that's going to come out of here. And we are going to come back to what we wanted to say. So now it says end mill, and in parentheses it says one inch. And if you look down here, end mill, parentheses, one inch. <coughs> Now we come into cutting parameters, and this is the important information that you really want to pay attention to. The first thing is pass depth. So what pass depth stands for is how deep the tool is going to go before it starts cutting across the material. And the way to explain that is, let's say we need to make a cut that is 0 0.2 inches deep. When the pass depth is set to 0.1 or 0 0.1, you're telling the software to write the program, the G code program, to move the tool down by 0.1 inch, and then it's going to come over and make its cut. It's going to go back and come down another 0.1 inch, or in other words, now at 0.2 inches, and make its cut. So pass depth is the maximum cut depth that's going to make at each pass that it makes. So a pass is a cutting action, in this case going sideways, cutting through the, the wood that you're doing. So the best way to start setting that up, keep this in your mind, is enter the, the half of the diameter of the tool or the router bit. Now, in this case, it's going to be a little bit different because of the nature of what the tool looks like. We don't want to do half of an inch at a time. You want to know the limits of your machine. I would say, until you get better at it, never go past 0 0.2 on your pass depth. Now, we're going to set this at a point 0 0.125 or an eighth of an inch. That means that the face surfacing bit will come down at it to an eighth of an inch into the material and then start making us cut across. The next one is the step over. This is important as well. Now most people don't understand step over. So what I'm going to do is step out of this library for a minute so I can explain to you what step over is. I'm going to apply this data, say OK, and come back to the, this, the design area in 2D, and I'm going to draw a circle that's going to represent our 1 inch diameter uh, facing bit. So let's say this white material is the material that we are going to be facing material wood off of. And this is the 1 inch diameter router bit. When we say we are going to make a 50% step over, what that's telling the software to do is when it writes the program to only step this tool over by half the diameter of the tool. So for example, this one inch diameter end mill is going to be coming in and starting to surface the material just like that. And it's going to want to come over and come back down. So at a 50% step over, it's going to come over by half the diameter of the tool, which would be half of an inch, <coughs> come back down, make its cut, step over another half of an inch, come back up, make its cut. Since we have a step over set at 50%. If the step over was set at 75%, the router bit would come over 75% of the diameter and start making us cut, move over 75% of the diameter, come back down. And if it was set at 10%, it would only be a little bit like that. So I hope that made sense to you. Step over is very important for finish work. Okay, so we have been dealing with step over. So the default you want to use is 40%. In the case of a surfacing bit, we're going to go higher. We're going to go to 70%. 
and you'll see that this field just updated to 7, 0.7. If I go back to 40, it just changed to 0.4. So you can either enter in the actual distance that's going to step over, or you're going to set the percentage. And I like to set the percentage. It's easy. Again, 40% for most finish work. Then we get into feeds and speeds. This is important as well. Now, most CNC routers that are home-based have a router on it, not a spindle. A router means it's a machine that you can take off and do other work on a uh, piece of wood or whatever you want to do. A spindle is actually controlled by the software. So you don't have a power switch on the motor itself. The software runs a code that tells it to turn on and tells it how fast to go. <clears throat> and that's what this number is for right here. So for all intents and purposes, don't even worry about RPMs unless you have a spindle. If you have that, then you're already pretty advanced and you're going to learn that you'll want to look up the tool feeds and speeds and enter that information in here but we're going to talk about feeds and speeds and uh, as we move along here because that does become very relevant if you have a very large tool well you just need to understand your tools so um i want to say just just go with what you have here ignore that number for right now you can manually adjust the speed if something feels funny the next is feed units now you see it says inches per minute you can go to millimeters per second millimeters per minute meters per minute inches per second inches per minute etc the two standards are inches per minute or meters millimeters per second I'm going to be in inches, so we're going to say inches per minute. Next to that has chip load. It's grayed out. You want to just ignore that for now until you understand what chip loads are. And then comes your feed rate. So if you remember, I was talking about pass depth. Well, pass depth, the tool comes down to a certain depth and starts to go across to make a cut. The speed at which it moves to make that cut is called the feed rate and in this case we are in inches per minute and the feed rate is set at 35 inches per minute now this is some information i am going to be putting on my website what are the feed rates for the different size tools because that can get very important if you are running too slow for a certain diameter tool you can wear your tool out too quickly if your feed rate is set too high you can break a small end mill so in this case for this particular tool we are going to set up a feed rate of 70 inches per minute if you are to start with a default feed rate for any tool start at about 25 inches per minute now the next number is the plunge rate a plunge rate is the cutting tool or router bit needs to plunge into the material and then start cutting material out so that plunge rate typically is going to be much slower than the feed rate depending on the nature of the tool so in this case it's an end mill end mills are not meant to drill so coming down would be a drilling function and since they're not meant to drill you want it to come down much slower to work its way into the wood and then it'll start to move sideways at the feed rate that you've set so right now we have eight inches per minute that would be a good default for you to always refer to as well and finally you have the tool number you can ignore that right now unless you have an automatic tool changer and likely you don't so you can always leave that as a one so now we have our tool completely set up our router bit for our one inch facing uh, surfacing bit and we're going to click apply and once we do that what's going to happen is the if you remember that the indicator over here was grayed out and now it's going to be colored in so this bit is now entered into your database and you can now use it i click ok and we can go back into it and you can go click that particular bit and everything is set up 
right there. So now whenever you do uh, design work and you start to write up your tool paths, this data is going to be pulled into that job. We'll do that with this one real quick. Let's take a look. I'm going to add a tool path to this job. So I'm going to, we'll do a profile cut. Now profile cut just follows a line. So I'm going to select that and then I'm going to select this right there, the outer boundary. And I'm just going to set up a couple of numbers here, 0.1. And I'm going to change my tool to that one we just created, the one inch surfacing bit. And I'm going to say OK. And remember, I said the the pass depth. Let's come back into that for a minute. This number right here, pass depth, is set at 0.125. So anything less than that that I set up right here for the depth, the cut depth. It'll only make one pass, and that reflects on this number right here, where it says number of passes. Now, if I go to 0.15, the minute I type that number, and this is going to go up to 2 because I am now exceeding the pass depth. Right there. So the 0.15 is deeper than 0.125. So we're going to go back to that, and we're going to tell it to do it on the line. So the center of the tool is going to follow along the line. And we're just going to click Calculate without doing any other settings. And I'm going to run that particular tool path that I just created. And what you're going to see is a groove created all the way around this profile here. So I'm going to run the tool, which is this button right here. And there it goes. Now you can see it created a groove for that tool. And that, my friend, is how you set up your tool library. If this video is helpful, give me a thumbs up. Uh, remember, these the this router bit set that I have ordered is becoming available. If you want to get on the list to get them down below, uh, you can either get to my website or a priority list if they are not necessarily available right now. So, uh, yeah, subscribe, leave a comment, whatever you want to do, and know that you are now at a brand new level when it comes to working in your design software. This is Garrett, and I will talk to you next time.